is the bastard executioner that is the new fx show just premiering last tuesday or yeah last tuesday and we're going to give you a review of it right now so the bastard executioner tells the tale of a former knight under king edward the first uh he helps put down a welsh rebellion at some point and he's, he's renowned for being a really, really good soldier. They don't quite get into it with the first episode or two, because it was like a two-hour episode, so I guess technically two episodes. Um, but he's got some backstory, and he had a big fall from grace, it feels like, somewhere along the line, because he was really renowned. And then, well, what happens is... Um, he's a Welsh he's put, No, That's not quite. Well, while he's helping put down a Welsh rebellion... Uh, by some baron, he's ordered pretty much on to a suicide mission where he's expected to be killed, gotten rid of, and pretty much they just sacrificed all these troops for some reason or another to kill this one character. Well, he doesn't die. He sees an angel and comes back. Uh, so, okay. But several years after this said this mission that he goes on that he's presumed dead from, uh, he's settled down. He's you know become a peaceful character. He's got a wife. She's pregnant. You know He seems to be wanting to be on the straight and narrow wants to be peaceful, but he's still kind of haunted by these dreams. Well, the fight won't stay away from him very long. Um, he, at some point, he's met by his wife's father and a couple other people from this small village, and the evil baron that rules this county, or the shire that they're in, um, is taxing everybody crazy. Well, these guys get together, they are kind of doing the Robin Hood thing and attacking some of these caravans, and returning the taxes, the food, the, the meat, whatever, the pelts, back to the people. So, of course, this upsets the Baron. Hmm. Well, he finds out where he, they all live and um, kills everybody. Yeah, didn't see that one families. coming. Did yeah, not see yeah. that one coming. You didn't, right? And so, during um, one of the battles, though, uh, where they actually, well, okay, the Baron kills everybody. Then they set a trap. For the baron because they're pissed off and they want to get some revenge well they reach out to the local welsh rebellion and say hey why don't you join us we're gonna set a trap for these guys and boom they kill this evil baron well during this there's for some reason there's a executioner slash torture just slash really nasty guy that's along for the ride and he gets killed along the, the way with uh, the baron and our main character decides, hey, what better way to get ourselves in the clear and make sure nobody else is chasing us than to go back to where this Baron's uh, castle is and say, hey, we found these dead bodies. We're just returning them to you. You know, blah, blah, blah. I'm the executioner. I was with them. Uh -huh. And he kind of takes up the mantle of this executioner okay. that just joins the, the Baron for this one ride. You know, so. They didn't well, have a lot of ideas that day. I mean, that's a creative one. But. Yeah, well. But well, I, and, the, and then the, the, the other twist, it's almost a copy off of Banshee. I don't know if you've ever seen that show, but that's a Showtime show. It's pretty much an ex-con does the same thing and becomes a new sheriff of the town. So it's kind of a copy off of that idea right there. But the, the big twist there is that uh, the, the executioner's wife and kid are in this town, and they vouch for him. They're like, yeah, that's that's my husband. That's my dad. You know, okay, okay. You know, they do set it up that this husband is not a nice person, very abusive. Uh, so it made a little bit of sense that they're like, yeah, we'll take anybody else but then who we just had. So um, so then does he take them into his house with his wife and kid? Like, what happens to this guy's wife and kid? Or no, were they already they killed? killed? They, they oh, were already yeah. killed. You said when that the Baron raided the town, yeah. They okay. raided the town. Okay, okay that makes a little bit more sense then that he's willing to just throw everything away and go now pose as executioner. I mean, I guess everything's yeah. already been taken away from him. So. Yeah, pretty much. And so this is this is him trying to almost start a new life, uh, kind of, sort of. But that's just a basic synopsis of what happens. Now, there's a little more that happens in there. I won't ruin it for anybody. But that's, if you're wondering, hey, what's this show about? That's what it's about. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Is it good? Yeah. Well, let's get into that. Uh, so let's start with the writing. Now, the writing isn't great, but it's not bad. Uh, it doesn't feel like it takes me out of the time period. Now, I know they're not like exactly writing it like the old English because nobody would understand it because it does take place in the 14th century. So, But it, it's it's good enough. It keeps the, the, the plot flowing. Um, there's not really any slow moments, so the pacing is pretty good. It doesn't 
drag really it just kind of keeps you you going you're and you're learning stuff because this is the pilot episode so you, they have to set up all these new characters everybody who's going to be in there so the writing was good but the it was almost more pushed the story was more pushed forward with uh visual images they have a lot of very violent images in this mm. and it really well, it pushes the story forward so i think that's kind of what you'd almost, expect from a show about an executioner yeah yeah, it's almost on the edge. Like it's like really, they can put this on cable TV because this is an FX show, and it's just like, oh, uh, wow, they're they're going a little far. Um, now it is written by Kurt Sutter from Sons of Anarchy. He wrote that show. He actually plays a character in this new show, as well as he played Otto in the other show. And you also see uh, Katie Sackoff, I believe that is not maybe not Katie Sackoff. I can't remember her name. Katie Sackoff, I think, is from Battlestar Galactica. Katie Sajak or something. She's also in Sons of Anarchy. She's also the voice of Leela in um, Futurama. So oh. she's, she's in a lot of things. interesting to see her because I've seen, I think, maybe a couple of things where she's a voice actress. But Yeah, uh, and she plays a witch in this. And she actually plays a good character. So it, it's n so the writing, not bad, not great. Doesn't really enthrall me too much, but it's, it's, it's not bad. It keeps you in the moment. Um, but it is pushed forward more by visual things. So the acting, um, now we have Lee Jones, who plays Wilkin Brattle, the main character, the guy who becomes the executioner. This guy, I was trying to find something else he had been in. It says he was an actor for four different things, but I'd never, ever seen him before, and I've never heard of whatever he was an actor for. So this guy's a total newcomer, like fresh on the scene. It, I don't want to judge him harshly, but it's not great. He's kind of stiff. Even the, the moments where he's supposed to be, like, really emotional, like when he comes upon his wife's dead body, he does find the town, you know. Uh, it just, it, it's kind of stiff. It's not really that great. Uh, but I could see it getting better and really understanding the character more. Maybe we st it starts to feel better. It is still the first two episodes, so give it time to grow, but not so great so far. Uh, now, the main villain, not the Baron, because the Baron gets killed in the first episode, uh, but there's Stephen Moyer plays the main villain, um, and you might know him from True Blood. He's been in a couple other things, but he was one of the main va vampires in True Blood for a long time, so he's pretty good. He plays Milas Corbett. Um, he's an excellent villain. He's actually the King's Chancellor. Uh, not the King, I'm sorry. The Baron's Chancellor, and he's very evil, and you really hate him, and he pushes forward some of the most evil things in the show. So it's just like, yeah, I hate him, and he's good at making me hate him. So that is a good shining symbol of a show that will develop into something good is they establish a good villain. Uh, I'm very big proponent of villains. You have to have a great villain in, a, in order to have a great show, movie, story. You have to have a good reason why the, the main character is doing what he's doing. So that was pretty good, and those are the two biggest characters and there's a couple bit actors here and there and they all do a good good enough job so there's that uh, but an overall synopsis of the total show now just i, I want to say that sometimes it can be hard to judge a brand new show like this a pilot or the first episode or two it does take a little time to set up the characters a lot of people think that's a little more boring and a little more of a dull process that's why nobody wants another marvel spider-man reboot we've already seen the beginning a million times um so that being said it's eh, the show didn't impress me it really didn't i wanted to be impressed i really wanted to love this show it just didn't impress mm -hmm. me the acting on one side was kind of flat the dialogue wasn't that great and they just went over the top when i said they had very violent images they went extremely over the top with some of this imagery. I mean, people's heads getting crushed in. At one point, his pregnant wife has herself disemboweled. I mean, mm. it's just, it's like, oh, man, I don't want to see that. You know, you can tell a story. Game of Thrones does it great. Yes, they have some graphic imagery sometimes, but they use that when they really want to hammer a point home. This just seemed like it's like, hey, we mm. can do it. Let's just do it. So and maybe so, if you're really into gory stuff, then this will... It will hit that for you. Yeah, you probably yeah it will. It will hit that for you, but, guaranteed. And that doesn't hit that for you. I don't know. You're you're beyond me. <laughs> so, but it's a but little it, much in it. That's the only thing going for it, or is yeah. It, and they almost did it for shock value. It does help push the story forward a little bit. Like I said, the visuals really are what pushing the the story forward. The graphic violence that's you know bestowed upon some of these people is just really it's crazy. Um, but again, it was, it's over the top. And if that's the only way you can tell a story or if that's the only way you're going to keep me interested, I'm not really going to be interested. Hmm. So 
wasn't impressed. I, I do think it's worth giving maybe an episode two more. Maybe they calm down the violence and they up the narrative a little bit more. What's going on? Things are going to settle into place because maybe he is now the executioner. Past, yeah, now that you're past all the, the setup value, mm-hmm. maybe it'll pick up. Yeah, maybe because there is some intrigue. I do love historical pieces, uh, you know, these time pieces. And this is set in a really historical time, uh, the 13th century or 14th century, I'm sorry, uh, where there is a lot of rebellions against England up in Scotland and Wales, so on and so forth. There's a lot of good intrigue going around in this time. So depends on how they want to harness it. They've set some players in place. Also, the Baroness's wife is in there. She seems like she's okay. She wants to be have control of the people, but she also thinks that you know going too far is what really incites rebellion. Keeping people happy is what keeps your your kingdom mm-hmm. prosperous. So she's like a, a middle character. You can see her probably if someone does something too crazy to her, she'll go evil. But <laughs> we haven't seen that yet. So all in all, I'm gonna give it a two and a half out of five. Mm. So not a great rating. Something maybe if you're bored, you can watch. If you're really into the gore and stuff, then eh, this is right up your alley. But I'll give it an episode or two more. But if it doesn't really turn things around, it's going to be a show that I'm not going to really watch. And I'm disappointed because I really wanted to like this show. Kurt Sutter, I loved Sons of Anarchy. Uh, The acting in the show, they have some really, really good, strong pieces. Like I was saying, Stephen Moyer playing the villain. But... I don't know how much it'll carry it. So give it two and a half Chewbacca chainsaws out of five. 